few weeks ago, I had a good friend of mine text me. He's like, I want to come on your podcast. And I literally <laughs> had to reread this text twice. I was like, did this, did this guy just ask me this? Because I feel as honored as I've ever felt. One of the, yeah, I did. One of the best guys, one of my favorite guys in the NASCAR garage is joining us this week. Shout out to Mr. Jeff Burton. Jeff, good to have you here. I picked a hell of a week to come on. <laughs> that's exactly what I was so going to ask that's, you. That's what I was going to bring up, TJ. And I, I should have said, hey, I want to come on your show when it's convenient <laughs> and not difficult. I'll let but. you know Sunday night one week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a lame week upcoming. So ironically, Dale Jr. was texting TJ and myself last night around about what, TJ, midnight? Something like that. Uh, I mean, I was still in Texas time, so it wasn't midnight for me yet. But it was probably 11 for me. So it was yeah, probably, so midnight yeah. here. And he's like, don't y'all let Jeff Burton off the hook. You get him riled up and you get him fired up. You get his opinion out of him. I was like, oh, we will. We will. Yeah, we got uh, we got high expectations for you. I didn't. I, you know, that's the first time I've heard someone have to think that they have to rile me up to get my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was easy. It's the, yeah, it's not. A, the, that doesn't happen at home, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. You bring up driver's council, and, and that's one of the reasons I was excited you're coming on here. Tell me how you ended up. You were always nicknamed the mayor, and, and now you literally are By the mayor. By boy, Boyer. Yeah. He stuck that on me. <laughs> <laughs> and now you literally He's are the mayor. so much crap for, in this sport. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you're leading a consolidated effort, which we've never really had, you know, not with, with representation, right? So you're leading this effort. How did you get to be the guy, the mayor of, of this thing? And, and what are you guys working on? That's a good question. Um, as far as what, you know, how I got that, I, honestly, it was kind of weird. I had three or four drivers at the same time, like within a week of each other, texting me, asking me if I could help do something. Yeah. It's never been like that. It's never been that close. So when you do that, when you say, okay, man, we're going to pay you points for every damn thing throughout the race, and those points are more important than ever, and if you win a race, you got a chance to win a championship, which from a guy that never won one is a big damn deal. You're going to get what we got. You're going to get people pushing and trying to make something happen. And the aggression level has gone through the roof. And with that, there has been some respect issues that have gone, that have deteriorated. I don't think we are in this culture problem. I think it's just quite simply the reward is so big. And, you know, Mark, Mark and I have talked about this. I don't know if I could have existed in this, this model. It wasn't my, I wasn't good at that. I was not, give me 600 miles with a shitty racetrack and get go get I'll go get you some. Yeah. That's me. You give me a 20 mile race on a great racetrack with tons of grip, I'm gonna run you 20th. I just that's not me. I don't know if I could have existed in this in the way they race today. That doesn't make it wrong. That doesn't make it wrong. Um, these drivers that we have today are don't tell me they're not as good as they used to be. I don't want to hear it's a bunch of crap. That's a bunch of crap. Those, these guys today could win races in any era. They could have win. They, I, I don't want to hear, well, they, they ain't as good as y'all were. That's crap because they are. Are they driving, and I mean this with all due respect, are they driving harder than you drove yes. all the time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's a lot of good people in that, in that, in that uh, NASCAR tower and a lot of racers in that NASCAR tower, hardcore racers, and they, but they screwed up. And, and – um, it's, you know, it's not a mistake that they should have made. Um, I am always, you know, I'm, I'm a little sympathetic because I think that anytime you start changing the damn rules for a special event, you open the door for stuff and any other race, they throw that caution race is over. Everybody's locked in. It's done. They throw that caution and it's a unique deal. They took the white flag, a normal race, race is over, but now it's not. And those guys have to adjust on the fly to that. It was not a caution that needed to be thrown for any reason, even if it would have been in the middle of the race. That's what was confusing to me. Like, that caution just didn't need to come out. And so they, they owned it. Uh, but then when you make the mistake, how do you handle it? And I will tell you that I think – one of the worst calls in the history of the sport, in the history of the damn sport, was when they put Jeff Gordon in the damn playoffs 
because of what happened in Richmond with with the MWR cars. With Brett, yeah. That was a <laughs> <it> was <Brett. laughs> That was one of the dumbest things that ever happened in the history of the sport. And I will tell you, when they made that call, it made me wonder if I even wanted to be in this sport. It was so horrendous to put a guy in the sport because what might have happened. Bull crap. You don't know what would have happened. You can't make a call on what might have happened. So I hear people say they should have brought him down pit road. Don't buy all that. What they did, well, I'm watching it. I had left the racetrack and gone to the hotel and was watching the race in the hotel. I was in full confession. I was at the bar. There were three yeah. guys at the bar, and they were like, "What's happening?" And I'm like, "He ain't getting that window net up." It and they turn around. They turn no. around, look, and they recognize me. Like, well, there's a guy that should know. I said, "He ain't getting that damn window net up. It ain't happening. <laughs> not possible." <laughs> and I was like, "Listen, man, I love you. I want you to race your way in this All Star race. I'm not going to get on Twitter and promote anybody to vote for you <laughs> <laughs> because if we don't race our way in, I don't think we deserve to be there. Uh, I don't yeah. like this fan vote. I hate to I, 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 I when I when I had to run that damn thing, it made me so mad after the all open. It was so embarrassing. And um, I mean, it is. It's like you suck. You got to run the open. And, <laughs> And, and now you have to drive all the way to Texas to run the open. Yeah. And, 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 um, and a race that doesn't even suit you. <laughs> <laughs> and they, if we're going to do the fan vote, you need to politic. My ass ain't politicking for somebody to vote for me. Like, if they want to, they can, but I am not you're, going you're to. Not you know, I mean, votes. there were political campaigns over voting oh. for you. The hell with that. Oh, not any part of that. Oh.